Hello students, welcome all to the world of language, rather speech sounds. Okay, in the last class we had seen or we discussed uh, the different mechanisms that helps us to uh, make or produce a sound. We discussed what is phonetics, we discussed the mechanisms and the different organs or parts which is involved in producing a sound. Uh, beginning from the definition of phonetics, uh, phonetics is the scientific study of speech sounds, how they are produced, transmitted and received. So the three parts involved production uh, which is uh, elaborately discussed or studied in uh, what is articulatory phonetics, a different branch of phonetics and transmission. It is again elaborately uh, discussed and studied in um, acoustics phonetics and the third one auditory phonetics which deals with the reception of the sounds or speech sounds. Uh, we discussed the speech mechanisms, the three major part, pulmonic estuary mechanism which is inclusive and aggressive and the next one was uh, glottalic estuary mechanism which involved the throat part and the uh, uh, velaric estuary mechanism which involves the head part. Again we had the same attribution to the different parts or organs involved in speaking which deals with respiratory system consists of the lungs and all that and moving on to the upper part that is the throat or the neck part we have the phonetary system where the phonation of the sounds occur and the third one the head part in which we have all the cavities uh, oral cavity nasal cavity and the back wall and all that. So. Uh, I had written certain uh, parts or organs, the major organs involved in creating the sounds. So we can together call it as organs of speech. If an essay or a paragraph question comes, you can elaborately explain this by drawing a diagram of the vocal cords and its positions and all that. Beginning from the lungs. The first organ involved in our speech uh, begins from the lungs. organs of speech in the you can see the parts the respiratory system, uh, phonetary system, and auditory, uh, sorry, articulatory system. You can see the three parts of the introduction you can mix it up in a very presentable manner. It's up to you. But just know about the things. That's all. So the first part, lungs. We have to say lungs in the different parts. That is the trachea, muscles. That is the Which is involved in making the sound. Second one, larynx. Which consists of the vocal cords. Which is the hero. We said yesterday. Uh, to produce the sound. Uh, when vocal cords vibrate. And uh, how the sounds gets uh, qualified. In the quality of the sounds vowels and all that it will change based on the movement of the vocal cords its shape and all that so larynx that part pharynx the wall uh, or the back side or the part which is just above the larynx is called as pharynx nammada larynx inde thondade thottu mugalilatte ee vaayade ettom porayilatte madil wall nu venengi parayam ettom porayilatte bhagathine nammal pharynx ennu parayunnathu okay so pharynx ennu parayana bhagam nammal kandu uh, roof of the mouth. Roof of the mouth is mm -hmm. different parts of the uh, beginning from the uh, lip and teeth. That is the teeth in the body. Our convex side we call it as alveolar ridge or alveolum. Beginning from there. We can see a concave part. We can touch uh, these parts using our tongue. You can feel it. The concave part which is called as heart palate because that part is bit Hard. And if we go a little we can feel uh, a softer part which is called a soft palate or wheel. That's why we have a back light. We have a uvula and a fleshy light. We have a mouth in the roof of the mouth. We have a back light. 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 Uh, uvula, you say that we have to use some of the words. The rest of the words we have to use in speech. Alveolar rich, uh, hard palate, soft palate. This is all these parts uh, comes under the fourth one, fourth point. The roof of the mouth. The fifth one is tongue. Uh, in the last class we mentioned only the three major parts I believe. The tip of the tongue, the body and the uh, root. Uh, basically it involves a uh, six parts or five parts 
the tip of the tongue etchum edge aitla tongue inde navinde etto attathulla bhagathine nammal velikana peraanu note cheyunnadana tip nu varnattu tip of the tongue moving on to the tongue we have the different parts of it that is the tip of the tongue that is the extreme edge of the tongue and the part which is just above the tip we call it as blade blade of the tongue adinte tottu mogalathe bhagam blade nu parayumbo it it is just opposite to the alveolar ridge or the teeth ridge teeth ridge nu alveolar ridge nu alveolum nu parayna bhagathinte nere thaaye kidakkuna if our tongue is at rest we can feel that this blade part it is just the opposite of the teeth ridge uh, then front part tongue inde uh, front part nu parayunnathu heart palate inde opposite il kidakkuna bhagavanu if you are if you are uh, at a rest you can realize if you close the mouth and if you are at a rest you can feel that the front part of the tongue is just opposite the heart palate and the back part of the tongue is just opposite the soft palate or parallel to the soft palate and center nammal chela bookil ipo nammal vowels okka padikumbo we can see the center of the tongue which means that the part that comes between uh, or the mid part of uh, soft palate and hard palate where they meet that part is just the opposite of your center part of the tongue appo navinde bhagangal nu parayumbodhekku onnu adinde tip part etu mattathil agram edge mattathu adinde blade adayad alveolar ridge inde nere thaaye kidakkuna blade part then we can see front part Uh, which is just above or just the opposite of uh, just below or just the opposite of the heart palate heart palate inde nere thaaye kidakkuna bhagam pinna center undu center nu parayunnathu heart palate um soft palate um kooda meet cheyna aa oru bhagam adinde edana egadesham mid part avu namukku ingane division onnum illa aa bhagathu inde nere opposite varunnathine nammal center nu parayum adinde thottu backil aayittu back part of the tongue Uh, which is just the opposite of the soft palate nerthe parnallo nammade soft aitla annakinte etum soft aitla backilathe bhagam veelam ennu vilikkuna soft palate inde nere opposite aanu thaaye aitana endu kadakkunnathu back of the tongue inde bhagam varunnathu pinna root of the tongue which is not you definitely not used for uh, speaking sounds ithre aanu tongue inde different parts nu parayunnathu tip the blade front center back and root six parts ചിലതിൽ നമുക്ക് ഫൈവ് പാർട്സ് ഒക്കെ കാണുള്ളൂ സെൻറ്റർ കാണില്ല ചിലതിൽ റൂട്ട് പറയില്ല എനിവേ നമ്മൾ ചില ഡിവിഷൻസിൽ അപ്രോപ്രിയേറ്റ് ആയിട്ട് ഈ പറയുന്ന ആറ് ഭാഗങ്ങളും കാണാം ജസ്റ്റ് റിയലൈസ് ഇറ്റ് ബിക്കോസ് വൈൽ മേക്കിംഗ് വവൽ സൗണ്ട്സ് വി നീഡ് ടു നോ ദ ഫ്രണ്ട് ബാക്ക് ആൻഡ് സെൻറ്റർ ഓഫ് ദ ടങ് ടു നോട്ടീസ് ദാറ്റ് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് പാർട്സ് ഓഫ് ദ ടങ് ഇസ് റിക്വയർഡ് ഫോർ ദാറ്റ് പാർട്ട് ദൻ ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് വൺ ടീത്ത് നമ്മുടെ പല്ല് ഉപയോഗിക്കാറുണ്ട് നമ്മൾ സംസാരിക്കുമ്പോൾ definitely yes definitely the lower uh, front teeth is not much important but if you miss some it will be difficult for you to uh, utter the sounds s and z alle namku pallu valiya importance onnum illa pallu avade ingane passive aayittu irikkunnanne ullu pakshe ee lower front teeth thaaye ullathu adhe samayam thanne avade pallu illengil na avastha alochu nokka it it would be difficult for us to utter the sounds s കാറ്റ് മാത്രമേ പോകുള്ളൂ ശബ്ദം ചിലപ്പോൾ കേൾക്കാത്ത അവസ്ഥയായിട്ട് വരും അല്ലേ ദെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഓൾസോ റിക്വയർഡ് ദ അപ്പർ ഫ്രണ്ട് ടീത്ത് എബവ് വൺ എസ്പെഷ്യലി ദ ടു ടീത്ത് ടു അപ്പർ ഫ്രണ്ട് ടീത്ത് ഇസ് റിക്വയർഡ് ടു മേക്ക് ദ സൗണ്ട് ത് ആൻഡ് ദ ആസ് ഇൻ തിക്ക് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ അപ്പോൾ മുകളിലുള്ള ഈ രണ്ട് പല്ലുകളും ഇല്ലെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് ഈ പറയുന്ന ശബ്ദങ്ങളോ വാക്കുകളോ ഒന്നും ഉപയോഗിക്കാൻ അത്ര എളുപ്പമാവില്ല അല്ലേ സോ ടീത്ത് ഇസ് ഓൾസോ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ സിക്സ് പാർട്ട് ഓർ സിക്സ് പോയിന്റ് വി ഡിസ്കസ് and the last one seven yes definitely uh, the lips is very much important in uh, making sounds vowels as well as consonants and vowel ne quality e define cheynadile aa vowel sound ine nammal identify cheynadile lips inulla importance valare important aanu that is uh, whether it is rounded or unrounded po e ennu parayumbodhekkum the lips are unrounded and u or o when you say the lips are rounded so the shape or the position of the lip is very much important to create a particular vowel sound as well as a consonant sound while we make p or m we require the two lips so lips are important in making the speech sounds so these are the seven important parts required in making the speech sounds broadly we can say it as respiratory system phonatory system and articulatory system when we divide it we'll get seven parts 
Okay. Now, so, we have to say that the roof of the mouth and tongue are very important. We have to say that the teeth, alveolar ridge, palate, hard palate, soft palate, and the uvula are in the roof of the mouth. Changna varai ba adinte different parts tip, blade, front, center, and atram baangalok ko varai nanda. So that is important to note. Okay. Next we are moving on to the vowels. We know that we have or you may you might have studied these sounds in your first semester. There are forty four sounds, speech sounds in English, and um, we have only twenty six alphabets. And this incongruity makes all the problems and troubles. Is it? If you are alphabet, you will be able to get the alphabet. You will be able to get problem, this uh, mismatch that creates the problems. So, that's why we have to get the actual pronunciation. We have to get the pronunciation. Together, we have in English, we have 44 sounds, speech sounds. And it is divided into two, broadly divided into two, vowels and consonants. Malayalathil aanengil nammal padikin nangan ele, swarakshirangalum, vengenakshirangalum. Enda ane virandu nangilala vethyasam. What is the main difference between vowels and consonants? Vowels. While producing a vowel sound, the air flow or the flow of the air will not get obstructed or blocked anywhere inside the mouth. It will be having a free flow of air. While uh, making a consonant sound, whether it is k, p, or t, we can see that the air is blocked inside the mouth somewhere, either completely or partly, and then release or escapes through any passage it gets. Vowels in the flow or air passage it is free. And the another important thing since the air flow is free, we can see that all the vowel sounds are voiced sounds. All the vowels are voiced sounds. At the same consonants like we can see that in consonants there is voiced sound and voiceless sound. Yesterday we had seen the position of the vocal cords. When vocal cords vibrate, we will get voiced sounds, ingressive. And when the vocal cords is not vibrating, when it push upwards, we will get ejectives or uh, voiceless sounds. We have p voiceless and b voiced. T voiceless and d voiced. We have k voiceless and g as voiced. So, E division vowels in vowels are voiced down. Because of this, uh, without obstruction, the air is flowing freely. It is considering the uh, vowel sounds, we can see there are two articulators. And the articulator. That is the passage in air pass pass. That is the passage in the air pass pass. That is the passage in the air pass pass. That is the passage in the air pass pass. That is the passage in the uh, one is active articulator, the other one is passive articulator. One organ moving on, active on, the other organ constant on, passive on. So, which is the active organ and which is the passive organ? Or which is the active articulator and the passive articulator? The active articulator is the tongue. Now, vowel sounds are not the active articulator. While making a, um, a sound, our passive articulator is the roof of the mouth. This is the consonants are different organs changing. While going through the places of articulation, manner of articulation, this is the oral active, material passive, fur work, passive, passive, We can see it in detail while going through consonants. Considering the case of vowels, there are two articulators. One is active. The other one is passive. The active articulator is the tongue. The passive articulator is the roof of the mouth. Different parts of the roof of roof of the mouth. We can do different parts. That is the teeth ridge. That is the palate, hard palate. Soft palate. Now, this is the 
roof of the mouth in the bang and then there tongue in the different positions in the front uh, paralyte where another under back paralyte where another under center paralyte where another anyway the roof of the mouth is the passive articulator and the tongue which is moving is it is the active articulator okay now we are going to do that the and uh, what will happen is uh, because of the structure of open approximation this is the relation that we have a vowel sound this is the movement, that is the different title, manner that is the vowel sound we have a vowel sound the 20 vowel sounds so I would like to uh, recall uh, the elements basic sounds once again because which is required which is very much required for us to go into detail okay so you might have know this uh, vowels we have 20 vowels among the 44 sounds the other 24 are the consonant sounds and vowels uh, we are we divide it into two basically monof thongs which means pure vowel sounds and we have diphthongs which will be discussed later okay i had just written for you to recall the portions which you have studied we have eight diphthongs. We will be discussing only the 12 monophthongs uh, for the time being. Monophthongs, pure vowels and And among the monophthongs, we have uh, major five long vowels and seven short vowels. And here I have once again written the vowels and its uh, examples. One example of each. That is, first one is A in calm, E as in eat. O as in pool, O as in short, and O as in heard. So we have A, E, O, O, and O. These five long vowel sounds at first. And we have the short vowels here, the seven short vowels. We had seen the five long vowels, A, E, U, O, and O. We have the short vowels here. A as in cup. A as in cup. E as in kit. E as in kit. U as in put. U as in put. O as in pot. O as in pot. A uh, as in above or river. A uh, uh sound. Above, river. A. A as in set or bet. Get. A. Elephant. A. A for apple. Animal. Van. Bag. A. So we have the seven short vowels. A. E, U, O, E, A, and A, A. So these are the 12 vowel sounds we are going to discuss now and the basic criteria required for it. So for making a vowel sound, it requires three basic criteria or the three dimensions uh, required to make a vowel sound are these three as we mentioned the two organs lips and uh, tongue we said that it is very important these two organs are very important while making a vowel sound or uh, gives the quality to it so first one is position of the lips whether it is rounded or unrounded as we mentioned while making the sounds uh, or making the vowel sounds U or O, the shape of the lip it is rounded. So the position of the lips, the first criteria, which defines the vowel sound to be rounded or unrounded. Padite the chundinde shape enganyano then inserichitano namali vowels in a rounded ano, unrounded ano on the classify G in the. So first one is rounded, in which we have uh, these vowel sound examples. U and O which are rounded vowels so definitely it will, it will be having an opposite unrounded vowels can you give any example unrounded vowels yes as we mentioned E 
e while making the sound e the lips are not rounded it is in an unrounded or in a neutral position so it may be not unrounded it may be in a in an opened form or in a neutral form so those sounds or those vowel sounds that makes the lips uh, getting neutral or in an open position we call it as unrounded vowel sounds for example e or as in a e or as in a okay so according to the position of the lips vowel will or vowel sounds will take the quality of being rounded or unrounded okay second one part of the tongue we mentioned that uh, tongue has got different parts uh, the tip of the tongue blade front yes center back and root yes so these different parts are used in different contexts to create the different vowel sounds so let's see which are the major parts that is required to make the vowel sound in the case of making a vowel sound three important parts of the tongue is used it's very easy to remember front back and center quite easy right so the part of the tongue used which are the different parts of the tongue used while making a vowel sounds front back and the center as we mentioned the front part of the tongue while making a vowel sound it will be raised towards the heart palate now in the front bagam heart palate nammada concave aitulla avare hard aitulla bagathilekku naav uyarthikkondu parayna shabdangal for example e or a e a we can see the tongue is raised towards the heart palate so tongue is the active articulator and the roof of the mouth is the very good passive articulator so the tongue is raised towards the front part of the tongue is raised towards the heart palate and then we make the sound e and a hope you can feel it e a is try e a you are raising the front part of the tongue towards the heart palate then the second one back of the tongue the back of the tongue against the soft palate as we mentioned the part we discussed that it is just the opposite of uh, soft palate the back of the tongue lays opposite to the soft palate so the sounds which we make using uh, these parts are a and u a ka plus u pu so the back of the tongue it is raised towards the soft palate back of the tongue raised towards the soft palate again the roof of the mouth is passive the tongue is moving tongue is the active articulator there. so we make the sounds a and u by raising the tongue towards the soft palate or velum okay then the third one that is the center of the tongue we use the center of the tongue raising towards the mid part or the point where the hard palate and soft palate meet to make these sounds which are these sounds a uh, as in cup or bus up a uh, a uh, and a uh, a uh, and a uh, a uh, as in cup or up or a uh, as in heard bird while making these sounds we raise the center part of the tongue center part of the tongue towards the place where the soft palate and the hard palate meet the center part of the or the mid part of soft and hard palate the joining part thus create the centering vowels okay so these are the different parts involved in making the sound which is the second criteria part of the tongue used and what is the third one third criteria is height of the tongue which is used while making these sounds the tongue is uh, moved to different levels either to the high level or to the lower level or to the mid levels high uh, um, what is it half high or half low ingenella different positions 
തങ്ങിൻ്റെ ഹൈറ്റ് അക്വയർ ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് വവൽസ് പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ നാവിൻ്റെ ലെവൽ മാറുന്നുണ്ട് ചിലപ്പോൾ ഉയരത്തിലായിരിക്കും ചിലപ്പോൾ ലോവർ ആയിരിക്കും ചിലപ്പോൾ ഒരു മിഡ് പൊസിഷനിലായിരിക്കും അതാണ് ഹൈറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ ടങ് എന്നുകൊണ്ട് ഉദ്ദേശിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ മൂന്ന് ക്രൈറ്റീരിയാസ് വവൽ സൗണ്ട്സ് പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യാനായിട്ട് ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്ന മൂന്ന് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ആസ്പെക്ട്സ് ആണ് ഇത് വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ്റ് ആണ് ആർ ദീസ് ഫസ്റ്റ് വൺ ഇസ് പൊസിഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ ലിപ്സ് ആൻഡ് ദ സെക്കൻഡ് വൺ ഇസ് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദ ടങ് യൂസ്ഡ് പൊസിഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ ലിപ്സ് ഓഫ് യു റിമെമ്പർ വെദർ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് റൗണ്ടഡ് ഓർ അൺറൗണ്ടഡ് ഇസ് വെരി ഗുഡ് സെക്കൻഡ് വൺ പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദ ടങ് യൂസ്ഡ് വെദർ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഫ്രണ്ട് ബാക്ക് ഓർ സെൻറ്റർ വി സ്റ്റഡി ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് ഗോട്ട് സിക്സ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് പാർട്സ് ബട്ട് നൗ വി നീഡ് ഓൺലി ത്രീ പാർട്സ് യെസ് ഫ്രണ്ട് ബാക്ക് ആൻഡ് സെൻറ്റർ ദ ലാസ്റ്റ് വൺ ഹൈറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ ടങ് യൂസ്ഡ് നാല് ഭാഗങ്ങളാണ് നമ്മൾ പ്രധാനമായിട്ടും നമ്മുടെ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് ബുക്കിൽ അതായത് നമ്മൾ ലാംഗ്വേജ് ആൻഡ് ലിംഗ്വിസ്റ്റിക്സിൻ്റെ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് ബുക്കിലും അതുപോലെ ഡോക്ടർ വി ശ്യാമളയുടെ ഈ ബുക്കിലൊക്കെ നമ്മൾ കാണുന്നത് ഫോർ മേജർ പാർട്സാണ് അവിടെ കാണാൻ സാധിക്കുന്നത് വൺ ഇസ് ഹൈ പാർട്ട് ഹൈ ലെവൽ ഇസ് ഹൈ സെക്കൻഡ് വൺ ഇസ് ലോ ഹൈ ഓർ ക്ലോസ് ലോ ഓർ ഓപ്പൺ തേർഡ് വൺ ഇസ് ഹാഫ് ഹൈ ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ഹാഫ് ക്ലോസ് ഫോർത്ത് വൺ ഇസ് ഹാഫ് ലോ ഓർ ഹാഫ് ഓപ്പൺ മനസ്സിലായോ ഇല്ല മനസ്സിലായില്ല നമുക്ക് വരാം so these are the different positions acquired by the tongue or heights acquired by the tongue while making the vowel sounds in order to clarify it i have written here first one high or close now we to attathu mugalayittu uyarthi pidichu nammal parayna shabdam that is e or u just feel you can understand that while making these sounds the tongue will be in a high position നാവിൻ്റെ ഉയരം അല്ലെ നാവിൻ്റെ ഹൈറ്റ് ഉയരത്തിലായിരിക്കും ഏറ്റവും ഹൈ ആയിരിക്കും ഇ ഓർ ആസ് ഇൻ ഉ ആൻഡ് കൺസിഡറിംഗ് ദ സെക്കൻഡ് വൺ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ലോ ഓർ ഓപ്പൺ വി ക്യാൻ സി ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് ഗോട്ട് ദീസ് സൗണ്ട്സ് വൈ മേക്കിംഗ് ദീസ് സൗണ്ട്സ് ഇറ്റ് അക്വയർ ദീസ് പൊസിഷൻസ് ലോ ഓർ ഓപ്പൺ ആ ആ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഓപ്പൺ നോട്ട് ഓപ്പൺ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഓപ്പൺ ഓക്കെ ആ ഓർ ആ ദ മൗത്ത് ഇസ് ഓപ്പൺ and the tongue is low that's why it is low or open nu ezhuthiyittulladu ivide okay tongue inde position low aanu mouth open aayirikku so a and a the next one is half high or half close that means close um open dem edayil or one third position la ittaanu tongue nikkunnadengil close and open de edayil ee vaayade ullil egadesh or one third position la ninnu konde പറയുന്ന ശബ്ദങ്ങളെയാണ് നമ്മൾ ഐദർ ഹാഫ് ഹൈ എന്നോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഹാഫ് ക്ലോസ് എന്നോ പറയുന്നത് അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ടു തേർഡ് ആയിട്ട് ഏകദേശം താഴെ ആയിട്ടാണ് കുറച്ചുകൂടി ഉള്ളു ലോ ആവാൻ എന്നുള്ള പൊസിഷനിൽ നിൽക്കുന്ന പറയുന്ന ശബ്ദങ്ങളാണ് ഹാഫ് ലോ ഓർ ഹാഫ് ഓപ്പൺ ഓക്കെ അതായത് ഇതിൻ്റെ രണ്ടിൻ്റെ ഇടയിൽ മിഡ് എന്ന് പറയാം അല്ലേ സോ ഹൈ ലോ ആൻഡ് മിഡ് അത്രയേ ഉള്ളൂ അതിനൊന്നുകൂടെ ഭംഗിയായിട്ട് കുറച്ചും കൂടെ സ്പെസിഫിക് ആയിട്ട് ടെക്സ്റ്റ് ബുക്കിൽ കൊടുത്തിട്ടുണ്ടെന്നേ ഉള്ളൂ so the different positions acquired by the tongue while speaking the vowel sounds it will be high either high or low or even mid adinannu split cheyittaanu namukku half high or half close ennum half low or half open ennum paranjittullathu okay പിന്നെയാണ് ഒരു വവൽ സൗണ്ടിനെ ക്വാളിഫൈ ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരു വവൽ സൗണ്ട് ക്രിയേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ആവശ്യമാകുന്ന വേണ്ടി വരുന്ന ത്രീ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ്റ് ക്രൈറ്റീരിയാസ് ആണ് നമ്മളിപ്പോൾ കണ്ടത് ഏതൊക്കെയാണെന്ന് ഒന്നുകൂടെ പറഞ്ഞേ ഫസ്റ്റ് വൺ ഇസ് ദ പൊസിഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ ലെപ്സ് വെദർ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ദ വവൽ ക്യാൻ ബി ക്ലാസിഫൈഡ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ദാറ്റ് വെദർ ഇറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ക്യാൻ ബി ഐത് റൗണ്ടഡ് ഓർ അൺറൗണ്ടഡ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ദ പൊസിഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ ലിപ്സ് സെക്കൻഡ് വൺ ഇസ് ദ പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദ ടങ് യൂസ്ഡ് the part of the tongue used may vary from front back and center alle onnigile front bagam uyartiita irikkum heart palate ne nere uyartiita irikkum shabdam parayunnunda irikka allengil back part soft palate ne nere raise edittaa irikkum parayunnunda irikka allengil mid part the center part of the tongue is raised towards the mid part of the palate areas that is the center sounds and then we moved on to the height of the tongue based on these aspects it can be high or low high means close now egadesham vaay adachu nu parayale adu pole angane close aayittu roof inde ettum uyarathil ettum thottu nikkuna pole alle raise edu pidikumbo we get the position as high and low means it opens the uh, flow or mouth for the air to free uh, flow freely so it is low 
and the mid part either it can be half open or half close or half high or half close our mid position ee moonu criterias aanu vowel sounds produce cheyanayittu require cheyna three criterias ore important aayittulla oru point alleki rendu pointum kuda namukku inda parayam before our class gets wind up so first one is tensed vowels tensed vowels അല്ല നമുക്ക് വളരെ അതായത് സ്ട്രെസ്സും ഫ്രസ്ട്രേഷനും ഒക്കെ പ്രഷറൊക്കെ ഫീൽ ചെയ്യുന്നൊരവസ്ഥ അപ്പം നമ്മുടെ നാവിന് ഇതുപോലെ ചെറുതായിട്ടൊരു പ്രഷർ ഫീൽ ചെയ്യുന്നൊരവസ്ഥയുണ്ട് എപ്പോഴാണത് ചില വവൽസ് സംസാരിക്കുമ്പോഴത്തേക്കും ദ വിൽ ബി എ ടെൻഷൻ ഇൻ യോർ ടങ് യു ഫീൽ യു എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ് എ ടെൻഷൻ ദീസ് ആർ സെർട്ടൻ സൗണ്ട്സ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഇ വൈൽ യൂസിങ് ദ സൗണ്ട് ഓർ വൈൽ മേക്കിംഗ് ദ സൗണ്ട് ഇ ദ വിൽ ബി ഗ്രേറ്റർ ടെൻഷൻ എക്സ്പീരിയൻസ്ഡ് So, those sounds are called as tensed vowels. E. Hello, you can feel a pressure feel. Now, I'll say E. While you say E. Bit. Kit. There is no tension. There is a free. The tongue feels free. So, those vowels are called as lax vowels. L-A-X. Lax vowels. So, we have tensed vowels such as E. And lax vowels such as E. Very simple, is it? So, that is the one aspect you have, we have to go through. And the next one is, we have to say, the tongue is too high, we have to say, the tongue is too high, we have to say, the tongue is too high, maximum limit, that is the name of vowel limit. So, what is vowel limit? The highest level in which the tongue can be raised towards the roof of the mouth, it is called as, without any frictional noise, it is called as, vowel limit vowel limit means the highest position to which the tongue can be raised without making any frictional noise it is called as vowel limit so these are the major aspects we have to go through and i have a homework for you to do at your home okay before moving on to the homework session let's uh, see this diagram which is in your textbook page number 41 Uh, so you can uh, draw this diagram once in your notebook and you have to show it to me uh, while I'll discuss or while I have the interaction session okay so this is the position of the tongue uh, the different parts of it used front central and back and the position it acquires the height of the tongue close half close half open or open about tongue in the different and open I can be ready I can half open half close uh, closed atom top light la e position is on a tongue acquire another while making the vowel sound as well as the different parts front bhagam central part back but in the opposite right and the and in the other roof of the mouth is there either number that tongue in the hour you shape in a on the diagram you but the lucky in the math where you box or table over the key no other this is our tongue and the different position of it and the different uh, parts of it involved in making the vowel sound which is illustrated in your textbook position of the tongue so what are the things or major aspects we have discussed today on the audition okay and the carrying on the kanda the basic item we started with organs of speech the seven important parts lungs larynx pharynx roof of the mouth uh, the different parts of it alveolar ridge and uh, heart palate soft palate and uvula and um, teeth teeth is important uh, especially the front two teeth we mention upper teeth then uh, lips are important and in the down part we have tongue it's different parts tip of the tongue blade front center back and root which is not used okay and the uh, uh, other things that we had seen is regarding the vowel sounds it is divided into two monophthongs and diphthongs and now we are discussing with the monophthongs and the major aspect and we had seen the uh, vowels once again a uh, e u and the short vowels a uh, a uh, e and all that so uh, going through the deeper level which means the basic criteria is required to make a vowel sound first one is position of the lips based on that we have rounded vowels or unrounded vowels and uh, the second one is the part of the tongue used whether it is front center or back and the position or the height of the tongue that is used uh, to make the sound high mid and low or high half open half close and low 
all these elements are discussed the three criteria were discussed uh, one more thing in the textbook itself in the page number 44 you can see the different or the three term label for your uh, speech sounds oro uh, vowel sin speech sound nalladalla oro vowel sin ulla three term label based on this ipo udaharanathina aadyathe oru shabdam edukkanengil it is e consider the sound e e vowel what is the position of the lips or what is the shape of the lips is it rounded e no it is unrounded so e ennu parayna shabdathinte aadyathe peru unrounded and adile ed bhagam aanu nammal use cheynathu while we discuss the part of the tongue we mentioned e is uh, while making the sound while producing the sound e we use the front part of the tongue against the alveolar ridge uh, so e is e has got the second label as front so e sound it is unrounded front and what is the height of the tongue while making the sound e it is half close e it is not e e e it is half close so what is the three term label for that vowel sound e as in kit pit pin and all that it is unrounded front half close vowel unrounded front half close vowel like that we have all the 12 vowel sounds and its three term label to be known to be learned i want to say to be studied don't buy heart it just understand it and learn okay so here are some example among the 12 vowels uh, short vowels and long vowels i have written only four for uh, showing you an example e first one is e it is unrounded why we make the sound e we know that the shape of the lip it is unrounded so it is unrounded and the part of the tongue used is front and the position or the height of the tongue it acquires the height of half close or mid and we have e which is again unrounded e in the sound in the longer version on e it is again unrounded we use again the front part of the tongue and the height is closed form closed form so okay e in the three term label unrounded front closed that is the three term label for the sound e and the third one is oo oo the shape of the lip it is uh, rounded and we use the back part of the tongue against the soft palate and again the height it is close raising to the roof of the mouth again oh oh again while making the sound the position of the lips it is rounded we use the back part of the tongue and it will be open just uh, feel while making the sound oh the tongue acquires the position of opened or low okay open Close. Okay. Okay. So these are the four examples, basic uh, example I had taken, and in your textbook, all the twelve sounds with its three term label is given, which I will give it to you later on. Now let's move on to the not the homework. That term is taken away. Okay. Let's do some exercise. Okay. mental exercise namka cheyam. classification Very easy part. Okay. So this is not even an exercise this is just a fun time identify me you just need to identify the sounds which is a very basic thing all the uh, simple lkg students would do okay so you just identify the vowel sounds in these words always i'll do i'll just uh, i won't read the words you know that i just make the spellings correct to it to make it more clarified first one b o r n okay second one t e n third one m e e t fourth one s e a t fifth one p i n sixth b i r d seven m o t h e r eight h o t nine 
U P ten C U T eleven C O O L twelfth one M A N very simple I had marked those parts and you have to identify who is the hidden vowel the okay and come on with the answers okay take care till then bye thank you